with The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. We're back, welcome everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and this is Silicon Angles, The Cube. The Cube is a live mobile studio. We go out to events, we extract the signal from the noise. The first Cube we ever did was EMC World 2010. We're here at EMC World 2014. That was in Boston. We're, of course, now in Vegas. Mike Kaler is here. He's the Chief Operating Officer of EMC Global Services. Mike, welcome back to The Cube. Good to Thanks, see you again. Thanks, Dave. Great to see you again. Yeah, so we're here at a little bigger stage than the Wikibon yeah. offices where yeah, we yeah. had you on the first <laughs> time. But, uh, so give us the update on, on EMC services. It's, I've said a number of times, those of you who follow theCUBE and follow SiliconANGLE, Wikibon, serv services to us is like the secret weapon. Yep. It's, I say, with this, where the rubber meets the road, it's where clients really get the value and bring that value to their organization. So give us the update on EMC services. So thanks, I, I absolutely would say the same thing. I describe our services portfolio as really the pointy end of the spear, right? Because it does start the dialogue and conversation with our customers about, in, in this case, IT transformation. So, you know, customers are still continuing on the, uh, in the journey to IT as a service. Kind of what's new, if you will, from the last time we spoke a year ago was a lot of CIOs, a lot of customers were saying, look, I, I'm in some state of the journey, but I really need to understand, am I ahead, am I behind, can you guys help me, not do it all, but give me some benchmark, give me some baseline. And so we actually developed an, an IT transformation workshop. And this is, you know, not the end all panacea of a strategy, but it starts the dialogue. So we spend a half a day with a customer, really assessing where they are on their uh, overall journey to the cloud, journey to uh, IT as a service. We then benchmark that against best in class, either across you know, just every company that we've done this for, or we can actually benchmark it against industry verticals. So if you're in financial services, how am I doing against other financial services? And at the end of that, you end up getting a report. And that report, again, doesn't solve it all, but it starts to give you, I'm ahead, I'm behind. And then for a CIO and its leadership team, helps them prioritize, how do I spend my money, where should I spend my money to you know, further my, my overall IT transformation. And that has taken off like wildfire. We are um, you know, 200 plus in the queue and, and growing every day. Because it, again, it's a, it starts the dialogue and CIOs love it. And that's a for pay service? No, it's actually for, for free. So it's a freebie. It's a freebie, yeah. So we, working with the client teams, uh, and the commitment from the customer is, it has to be the senior leadership team, because you can't really have this dialogue at, a, at the director or, or you know, the head of storage. So that's the commitment. It's you know, really two half days. You do a half day of prep, and we do a half day of readout. And it's proven to be wildly successful, both for us as, as EMC, but also, if you think about the industry trend of IT as a service, we're helping drive that and helping lead that in the industry. Well, and generally, that's how the consulting you know, companies that's sell right. services, and it's a part of the pre-sales process. So, so and I presume a lot of that is converting into business for you guys. It, it is, I mean, so there's parts of the overall transformation. We would say we've done that, you know, we, better than anybody, have done VM, many, many thousands of VMware implementations. So if you're starting with, hey, I'm going to move to the VMware, there's a proper dialogue that we can then go engage for fee to start to talk about the conversion from a virtual, or excuse me, a physical world to a virtualized world, as an example. Well, services has certainly changed over the years. I've been following EMC for a long time, and you know, services used to be, you know, basically install a symmetrics right. or some kind of break fix, or back in the day it used to be, you know, fix a memory board. Right. But, but and then it transformed. Um, you, EMC started to acquire companies that, that had more of a sort of CIO affinity. Uh, I'm wondering, since the federation model was announced, has that enabled you to get deeper into organizations and have more strategic discussions? So it has. I mean, what, what the interesting part is, is now with the federation discussion, a lot of, you know, EMC as the company didn't solve it all. They need VMware, and, and you know, if you think about our core infrastructure on top of a, a virtualized environment, and now you get to the, where it really matters, which changing the applications themselves, Pivotal really ma matters, and then wrapping our RSA security around that. So it's starting for, for customers that want to go big, it's starting to have that four pillar approach. And so for us, this more partner-led, consultative engagement has taken on an, uh, an ever-increasing life. The, the problem we've got, and the challenge we've got, is how do you scale that? Because it's so uh, a, a partner intensive that we're starting to do that in a very handcrafted way with a small number of companies. But as the federation starts to grow, customers are seeing real value in us brokering, if you will, across the top of the overall federation. Well, so they, there's an old saying, right? If it, ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But we heard <laughs> from uh, Pat Gelsing this morning that digital didn't look like it was broke, but uh, Digital Equipment Corporation, but, uh, but it was. Yep. Uh, so 
IT transformation. Um, is the driver for IT transformation because IT is broken in organizations? So, so not necessarily broken. Two things have happened, right? It's been a d d disrupted marketplace. So one, it's about cost and it's about speed and agility. And uh, for like it or not, uh, certainly in the enterprise space, customers uh, have install bases. And anytime you have an install base, uh, you tend to slow down. And as disruptors have come in, like the Amazons and the Azures of the world, they're showing new business models that gave business users other alternatives for faster time to market. So it's requiring this change, but it's also under, underneath that, the uh, financial models are changing too. So those two things are really was where we see a lot of conversations with the CIO. But that unto itself still doesn't change the game for business. It, it's not till you get to this next uh, conversation around how do I take advantage of that with my applications. And so we're starting to see conversations we've had in previous years around big data this notion of now it's really coming to life and what are customers doing with it. So, you know, what we're starting to see now is just like we're talking about A2 transformation, we're starting to see a lot of draw to, can we talk about a big data transformation? How do I take everything I got today and get it to, you know, the next generation of, of, of big data? And so that for us is an emerging market that's sitting on top of all of this IT as a service and pick your cloud broker, but really doing something with your apps and doing something with your data. So if I were CIO and I have all these disruptive changes, okay, you've mentioned you know, some of the public cloud guys like Amazon and Microsoft and, and then the big data trend. Okay, I buy it, I got to be data driven organization and then of course mobile. I, I don't need yep. anybody to explain that to right. me. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay, so I, I would look at it and say, okay, so the, these technology trends are very disruptive, but now we got to look at our process too. How do we exploit these trends and how do we you know, bring, really start with the process yep. and, and what, what improvements can we make? Is that the place to start? What are you seeing? Uh, and, and, and how does that trickle back into, particularly I'm interested in the data piece. Yeah. Are people becoming, are organizations becoming data driven or is that a lot of talk? I imagine it is in some, it isn't in yeah. others, but how do, you, how do you go from process, you don't want to start with the technology, so talk about the process back to the yeah. technology. So, um, uh, in these IT transformation workshops, as I said, you kind of have an output and says, hey, here's where I am against the best in class industry. I'd tell you, Dave, nine out of 10 times, the weakest link in this continues to be the organizational skills. And so almost, you know, uh, to your point, if it's a process, is a technology, I'd actually say it's not either of those. It's this starting this journey with really changing, uh, and again, the conversation we have with customers is, most of them are organized in the north-south silo. Uh, I do storage and I do compute, and, I, and you, you can't break those walls down at the same time you're trying to talk about this next generation. Because of the install base. It's because of the install base and hu the human dynamic. Yeah, yeah. People look <laughs> at it and say, where do I fit in this? And yeah. subconsciously or consciously, it becomes a blocker on actually getting speed and agility. And so, like I said, nine out of, nine, nine out of 10 times, we, we have to come back to the organizations and say, Let's create a package of education and dialogue around what are the jobs and then what are the skill sets and how can you, you know, help you and your uh, IT organization actually get those skill sets and enable uh, the growth of the individuals. So I flew out on the same flight with Tom Clancy and so uh, you mentioned education. Um, you guys have a, a, a pretty you know, big force there. Right. Uh, so, so is that what people are doing? Are organizations, are they saying, okay, let's re-educate, educate our people, or are they you know, say, saying, let's reshuffle the portfolio? How are they dealing with the human capital management yes. issue? Right, so um, a couple of ways. I'll, so I'll give you a, kind of the best in class that we've seen. Best in class, um, job descriptions are just fundamentally different. And companies that are trying to make the transition, we see them stand up and hire individuals into those new job descriptions well ahead of ever being there on the technology and ever being there on next generation IT service. And, and as almost the catcher and the builder of the new. Um, the ones we've seen that don't go so well is everybody's trying to stay in there, maintain in their silos, and they say, once we build it, we'll then transform. And so there's a very diametrically opposed approach. And again, as I said, best in class is spending ahead because the individuals in the organization then can see what the new structure looks like and see what good and success looks like, and they actually want to go there versus wondering or looking at a whiteboard thinking maybe one day this will change. And I can understand why th that's, that, that best in class is not necessarily being applied to all organizations because the CFO is going to say, how are we going to pay yeah, for yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. And unless you save over here, and, yeah. and, and but you got that chicken and egg problem, right. don't you? So, so you're saying best in class, so you, but you have a, 
Yeah, we do. It's, it's the a, Jeffrey Moore. You yeah, have the yeah, leading edge that's guys. Right. That's right. That, that's what do you what do you what do you predict? Yep. Are those guys going to break out from the competition? I, I, I do. So this is I use it a little bit of hey, you got to rob a couple of uh, uh, pop stands on the way to the bank, and <laughs> you got to go create the room because there's no free money trees, <laughs> and so that gets us into the secondary. So if you think about that next 60 percent that are stuck in the middle of they can't move forward. Uh, we then typically take a technology vein to that to say, let's go after a small portion of the portfolio, go after targeted cost savings, because we can prove that you actually, if you move to a more converged infrastructure, you move to an IT as a service, you will take cost out of your current run rate. If you, Mr. CIO, can go have that conversation with your CFO about not giving that money up, but using that as the reinvest, we start to see this you know, success over success, but it comes down a piece at a time. And, and that's secondarily, if you will, for a, a lot of organizations, that's how they've got to you know, eat the apple. So I was at um, ServiceNow Knowledge last week, yep. uh, and, and Frank Slootman gave a keynote, and he, he said, the CIO must become a business leader. And I said, come on, you know, what CIO is going to be the business leader? And then, of course, you know, typical ServiceNow fashion, they had a, I had a guest in theCUBE, his name was Atticus Tyson, he was the CIO of Intuit, he came out of the line of business, he was a P&L manager, yep. an engineering manager, are, are you seeing, I said, okay, check, that's one, and they, they had several other examples at the event. Are you seeing more and more uh, uh, CIOs come out of the business directly into, into the CIO well, We're role? seeing a few more, but I wouldn't say. It's not common, it, right? Yeah, it's okay. not common, and, I, and it's, I'm not sure I see it as a massive trend that's going to sweep. I agree, CIOs need to have business acumen skills, but I'm not sure that you can take um, a complete um, business leader and actually drop them into a major IT transformation. So, okay, so that confirms my sort of feeling that that's not going to be a likely scenario. So, okay, so the biggest challenge of getting to IT as a service we, we find from Wikibon customers is the alignment problem. That's right. Understanding the business requirements and understanding how to build a service catalog and understanding what they actually needed in meeting that need. That's right. How are, what's best practice in terms of doing that and how is EMC helping? Yeah, so I, I mean, back to the, this overall notion of a strategy. So um, again, best practice with our customers is, you know, take it down in something you can prove and you can go back to the business and show real value. And a lot of times, that, again, that becomes a cost envelope. So a lot of the discussions with our customer is not about let's the big bang and go spend millions of dollars on new technology, but it is what can you do for me this quarter, this month, you know, this, uh, this year to actually real return. And again, it may not be quote business value, but it is cost. And in some cases, as we talked about, you, you hold that cost because that starts to fuel the overall transformation. But it's in laying out that roadmap and it's honestly creating a, a, a situation where the CIO can sit at the table and talk about a multi-year journey, because lots of people want to come and say, I'm going to save your life overnight. And in, in, at least in the enterprise space, that just doesn't happen. <laughs> and, and you know, e either there's desperation and people take these wild bets that generally end in tears, but again, the best ones we see, you know, engage in the dialogue and go paint a vision, but then take that vision down in multiple chunks uh, that they can really return something to the business. All right, we'll leave it there, Mike. Thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. EMC Services transforming itself over the past decade quite radically and helping customers uh, transform on their journey to IT as a service. Mike, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. This is Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with John Furrier right after this. This is theCUBE. We're live from EMC World in Las Vegas.